of the IMF special drawing rights to boost COVID, um, to boost our post-COVID economic recovery as a country. The Auditor General's estimates also excludes the over 62 million that accrued to the COVID-19 Trust Fund, which was established by an act of parliament to help mobilize funds to complement government's fight against COVID-19. So the 21.8 billion Ghana cities we are talking about being the total amount of money mobilized by this government to fight COVID between March 2020 and June 2022 is not all there is. As you can see on the screen, you realize that at number three, the, I, the, the Auditor General only reported 5.5 billion, a little over 5.5 billion as inflows from the IMF. That was the first $1 billion we secured from the IMF under the Rapid Credit Facility. And if you can move to the next publication, you will see that. IMF Executive Board approves $1 billion disbursement to Ghana to address the COVID-19 pandemic. This was in April 2020, just after we recorded our first cases of COVID-19. And you can go to the IMF website to read that. So go back. This is the $1 billion the Auditor General reported. But after this $1 billion which came into the country in April 2020, we got another $1 billion to boost our COVID recovery program in 2021, which is not part of the $21.8 billion reported by the Auditor General. So if you can move to the next publication, Yes, which is also a publication on the Ministry of Finance's website. It says Ghana has received $1 billion allocation from the historic $650 billion IMF SDR allocation to boost global recovery. And this is dated August 27, 2021, more than one year after the first $1 billion came in. And so go back to the table, the first table. Uh, you realize that Clearly, the Auditor General left this second $1 billion out of the total amount of money that has accrued to the Kufuado Bawomiya government to fight COVID-19. It cannot be found in that table. Again, you would recall that Parliament set up um, by an act of Parliament the COVID-19 Trust Fund and encouraged Ghanaians, corporate Ghana, and other entities to donate into the fund to complement government's fight against COVID. According to the chairperson of the Board of Trustees, that fund has also accrued in excess of 62 million Ghana cities. Now I'm talking about um, uh, Her Ladyship uh, Justice Sophia Kufu. And if you can scroll up, this is a Ghana daily graphic publication or graphic online publication, you know, uh, in which the chairperson of the COVID-19 Trust Fund indicated that the National COVID-19 Trust Fund has since its inception on March 27, 2020, accrued cash of 62.3 million Ghana cities as of June of this year. And she was speaking in 2022. So don't be deceived. The 21.8 billion Ghana cities is just a tip of the iceberg. And that is what we want the people of this country to understand. These notwithstanding, ladies and gentlemen, the Auditor General report observes that out of the total amount of 21.8 billion, only 11.7 billion was spent on COVID-19, while the rest of the money, precisely 10 billion Ghana cities, was spent on so-called, quote, budget support, unquote. This animal called budget support, as we would later realize, was the Kufuado Bawumiya government's euphemism for their reckless and wasteful election-driven expenses, which resulted in an unprecedented budget deficit of 15.7% in the year 2020. We shall now discuss 15 key highlights of the shocking revelations contained 
in the Auditor General's report on government's COVID-19 expenditure. Friends, you know that there are many damning revelations contained in the audit report under review. But time and brevity will not allow us to discuss all those findings in detail. So we are limiting ourselves to 15 key highlights um, for purposes of today's encounter. I believe we will have another opportunity to go deeper and go into the other findings that time will not allow us to deal with today. So number one is that the Auditor General's report details how the Ministry of Health paid a total of $120 million to UNICEF for the supply of COVID-19 vaccines, but only received vaccines valued at $38.3 million, with a whopping $81.8 million of this transaction unaccounted for. This, ladies and gentlemen, raises serious concerns given the history of the current Minister of Health, Kokuaji Mamenu, under whose watch Ghana entered into the dubious Sputnik V vaccine contract and paid a colossal amount of money for vaccines which were never supplied to us as a country. It will be recalled how the government of Ghana, led by Kokuaji Mamenu, the Minister of Health, chose to pay $19 per dosage of Sputnik V vaccine through a phony middleman called Sheikh Ahmed Dalmuk Al Maktoum of the United Arab Emirates, when Ghana could have easily procured these vaccines at $10 per dose or less. Fellow countrymen and women, we in the NDC are very concerned that despite the dire economic crisis confronting the nation, the Akufuado Bawumia government has neglected and or failed to retrieve the outstanding amount of $81.8 million, which could have been channeled into other developmental ventures to ameliorate the plight of suffering Ghanaians. The second finding we would like to discuss this afternoon is the fact that the Auditor General's report reveals how the Ministry of Health recklessly paid an amount of 10.3 million Ghana cities as premium for special life insurance cover for 10,000 frontline health workers without any life insurance policy document and a beneficiary list. We find it intriguing, and should I say disgusting, how such a huge life insurance premium was arrived at without a beneficiary list detailing the names of beneficiaries, their dates of birth, and other relevant information we should have formed the very basis for the computation of that premium. This reckless misuse of COVID-19 funds by the Yakufu Adobawumia government does not come to us as a surprise. Why? Because we know that 30% of that booty went to an insurance company called Enterprise Insurance a company that is closely related to the finance minister, Ken Oforiata. It is a known fact within insurance circles that enterprise insurance on whose board the wife of the finance minister, Angela Oforiata, currently sits, today enjoys unfettered control over government's insurances as typified by this questionable arrangements. Thirdly, friends from the media, the Auditor General's report averts that a contractor who has been awarded a contract at Nalirigu in the Northeast region, the Vice President, the Appearance Fee-Man's backyard, for the building of a holding treatment and isolation center worth 15 million Ghana cities. Abandoned the project after receiving advance payment 
amounting to 4.5 million Ghana cities. That is equivalent to 45 billion old Ghana cities. They paid the money to him and he abandoned the site, according to the Auditor General. It is sad to note, friends from the media, that this colossal amount was paid to the contractor without him submitting any performance bond or any form of guarantee as best practice demands. This is a clear case of financial loss to the Ghanaian taxpayer and must not go unpunished. Number four, the Auditor General's report also details how the government of Ghana, through the Ministry of Health, paid an amount of 607,419 cities, no, dollars, in the year 2022 for the supply of 26 Toyota Hayes Deluxe ambulances, valued at a total cost of $4 million. According to the Auditor General, the delivery date of the said ambulances was 15th January 2022. However, one year down the line, these ambulances are yet to be delivered. The irony here, ladies and gentlemen, is that the man at the center of this scandal, Health Minister Kwekwa Jimamenu, is currently in court as the principal witness in the case brought against the former Deputy Minister of Finance, Honorable Lato Fawson. The cracks of the case against Honorable Lato Fawson is that he was allegedly involved in the issuance of letters of credit for the supply of some ambulances in the past. Which ambulances were actually supplied and delivered only to be abandoned by the Sakufu Adobawumia government? In the instant case involving Kwekwaji Maimenu, it remains to be seen whether the said 26 ambulances will arrive in Ghana at all. The future, they say, is pregnant. Still on various losses occasioned the Ghanaian taxpayer, the Auditor General's report uncovers how medical equipment valued at $110,088 and 27,895 cities were issued to a private hospital in Medina, which did not serve as a COVID-19 isolation center and did not receive any COVID-19 patients. This is a clear case of misappropriation of COVID-19 resources and highlights how COVID-19 funds and resources, equipment, were shared wantonly like granite to cronies of the Kufuado Bawomia government instead of being used to protect lives. In similar vein, the Auditor General's report reveals how medical equipment valued at $247,404 which were procured and received at the central medical stores and subsequently issued to some specific health facilities did not reach the health facilities. In other words, the medical equipment vanished. Ladies and gentlemen, to all intents and purposes, this was a great loot and share arrangement in which officials of government People we have elected to protect us, our duty bearers who we pay with our taxes, created schemes and procured medical equipment for personal gain under the guise of fighting COVID-19 instead of saving lives. Number seven, ladies and gentlemen, the free-for-all abuse of COVID-19 funds, as gleaned from the Auditor General's report, took the form of various shady schemes. One of such underhand dealings was a case of the over-invoicing, the case of over-invoicing by the National Food Buffer Stock Company. The Auditor General found 
through his investigations that between April 2020 and September 2020, the company received three payments totaling 42.2 million Ghana cities. That is some 420 billion old Ghana cities. Whereas way bills from various institutions which received these supplies amounted to only 40.8 million Ghana cities, thereby leading to over invoicing of 1.4 million Ghana cities and over. Regrettably, instead of exercising its power to surcharge and disallow those responsible, the Auditor General feebly, feebly, prefers to, as it were, recommend to the CEO of the National Food Buffer Stock Company to refund the SS money. This we find very objectionable. We hereby serve notice to the CEO of the Buffer Stock Company to in his own interest, in his own interest, refund the said funds immediately or consider himself a candidate for prosecution when power changes hands. Friends from the media, one of the most bizarre findings of the Auditor General had to do with cash payments by the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection, totaling 11.9 million Ghana cities, some 110 billion Ghana cities, old Ghana cities, to caterers who provided hot meals during the three weeks of partial lockdown, which monies were all retired with honor certificates. It is quite obvious, even to the uninitiated, that the resort to honor certificates, if you say honor certificates, all that, for example, you are buying food from a restaurant. So, uh, Hedja Bintu of Class Media goes to um, Papa and say, I'm ordering 1,000 packs of fried rice. And when she goes to her superiors at the workplace, she doesn't show her superiors with any receipts from papaya that shows that she actually bought thousand packs of fried rice and was supplied with a thousand packs of fried rice and actually delivered the thousand packs of fried rice to the workers of CMG. But rather, write something on the paper. That is what is called an certificate. That, oh, indeed, thousand packs of fried rice were bought and supplied. That is all. No invoice, no receipts for hot meals which cost the ordinary Ghanaian a whopping 11.9 million Ghana cities. And we are talking about just some uh, two Jimmy rice with egg without meat served to few people in Kumase, Kaswa, and Accra during three weeks of partial lockdown. Ladies and gentlemen, it is quite obvious, even to the uninitiated, that a resort to honor certificates instead of hard evidence in the form of invoices and receipts to support these claims and payments was a well-calculated scheme to whitewash and cover up the inflated expenditure on hot meals by the Yakufu Adobawomia government and has in fact deprived the nation of value for money in the said transactions. According to the Auditor General, his office could not authenticate the cash payments because they were supported with mere honor certificates and lacked internal checks, resulting in the possibility of payments being made to persons who may not have provided any service. And this is coming from the Auditor General, not Sami Genfi or the NDC. But ladies and gentlemen, what is most shocking is a related finding by the Auditor General that there were no honor certificates prepared for payments totaling 5.6 million Ghana cities out of the 7.9 million Ghana cities paid to caterers 
at the headquarters of the Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Protection. This is a clear case of broad daylight TV, if not robbery, which must not go unpunished. So, in the case of the 11.9 million, at least they were charitable to Ghanaians to have produced honor certificates. But in the case of this 5.6 million, which is equivalent to some 56 billion old Ghana cities, there were no receipts, no invoices, no honor certificates. So they just claimed that they spent 56 billion on hot meals with no evidence to substantiate that. So you ask yourself, if these monies belong to President Kufuado or his wife, is this how he would have expended it? You were giving money to fight a pandemic which at the time was killing many and in fact killed many. And this is how you chose to abuse these fans only to turn around and blame the same pandemic for our economic woes. Judge for yourself if these people deserve to be at the helm of affairs of our country. Friends from the media, it has also emerged that at the height of the pandemic, when frontline health workers complained about the lack of adequate PPEs, with some even losing their lives, senior management and supporting staff of the Ministry of Information were busy paying themselves a total amount of 151,000 Ghana cities as COVID-19 risk allowance without approval. One may ask, what risk did Kweju Opon Kroma and the staff of the Ministry of Information face to warrant the sharing of such colossal amount of money among themselves as risk allowance? You here, media men, you attended many Meet the Press series organized by Kojo Ponkroma in the Ministry of Information. When you went there, were you tested for COVID? Or were you treated for COVID? To have warranted the payment of COVID risk allowances to Kojo Ponkroma and his staff. What is even more bizarre is the finding of the Auditor General that allowances totaling 811,800 Ghana cities were paid. That is some 8.1 billion OCDs were paid to staff of the Information Ministry without adequate supporting documents. The Auditor General noted that apart from expenditure memos and sign sheets, there were no activity or program reports to support and authenticate these allowances. It goes without saying that the Ministry of Information and its staff must immediately refund these unjustifiable payments to the state or be held to account. And I don't know whether Kojo Oponkroma is still in Ghana. I've been checking his Twitter page and his social media handles to see what he has to say about this damning revelation. But I am yet to see any response from him. He doesn't deserve to be in the position he currently finds himself in if these findings of the Auditor General are true. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, the Auditor General also found that COVID-19 related payments were made to various service providers totaling 500 and 43 million Ghana cities. That is some 5 trillion old Ghana cities outside of the Ghana Integrated Financial Management Information System, GIFMIS, in clear violation of Regulation 61 of the Public Financial Management Regulations 2019, LI 2378. Clearly, these illegal payments were deliberately made by officers of the finance ministry in order to obviate the strict rigors and scrutiny of the government system. There is no doubt about the fact that this illegal act of the Akufuado Bawumia government has deprived the state of value for money as far as the said payments are concerned. Number 11. 
Quite strangely, ladies and gentlemen, the Auditor General also found that contrary to Regulation 78 of the Public Financial Management Act, the Ministry of Local Government made payments from COVID-19 funds totaling 285,135 cities on 10 transactions not related to COVID-19 activities at all. Again, number 12, the Auditor General found that between April 2020 and November 2020, the Ministry of Health made 23 payments, totaling 4.5 million Ghana cities to various suppliers for the supply of food items to the Pentecost Center and the Pantai Isolation Centers to cater for COVID-19 patients. Further scrutiny by the Auditor General disclosed that out of the total payments made, 3.7 million Ghana cities equivalent to some 37 billion old Ghana cities were fully acquitted and substantiated, leaving a difference of 765,459 cities unaccounted for. Friends from the media, the Auditor General further noted that a company known as Modern Security Printers was awarded a contract to print 929,550 pieces of educational posters at a cost of 4.3 million Ghana cities and to conduct public education on COVID-19 safety protocols for students for an amount of approximately 1.4 million Ghana cities. Shockingly, shockingly, the Auditor General did not find any report or evidence that supports the execution of the so-called public education. Yet, these monies have not been retrieved for the people of this country. This unaccounted payment is a clear case of financial loss, a clear case of stealing from the people of this country which must be retrieved without delay. Additionally, the Auditor General found that contrary to the express provisions of the public procurement law, the Ministry of Health, without approval of the Central Tender Review Committee, increased the cost of five contracts with total contract sum of 24.2 million Ghana cities by four million Ghana cities through variation orders. Similarly, the Auditor General established that the Ministry of Health entered into four contracts for the supply of PPEs at a cost of 9.2 million Ghana cities. That is some 92 billion old Ghana cities. Through single source procurement without the approval of the Board of the Public Procurement Authority. Number 15 and lastly, the Auditor General, ladies and gentlemen, also noted that in line with update number six of the president's address to the nation of 9th April 2020, non-governmental organizations and individual private water sellers provided free water services to their clients and customers at various MMDCs, MMDAs. However, a review of COVID-19 free water bills at the Community Water and Sanitation Agency disclosed that there were no actual water bills generated and submitted to the agency by the NGO and private individual water providers to support their claims. The Auditor General could not verify the bill and validate the dubious payment of a whopping 37.6 billion million Ghana cities. That is some 370 billion old cities by the Ministry of Finance. So you heard government announce free water. Some NGOs and private water suppliers said they were going to supply communities without pipe borne water or outside the reach of Ghana Water Company Limited with free water. These companies have water meters. And so it should have been very easy for the government of Ghana, if it cared about the people of this country, and if they were interested in the judicious utilization of public funds, it should have been very easy for them to say, 
bring your water bills so that we pay you. But that is not what Alaji Bawumi and President Ekufuado did. They simply asked the water suppliers, what is the production capacity, the daily production capacity of your machine? How many people live in the community you supply them with water? They just multiplied it and paid without seeing any water bill. This can only happen in a Kufuado's Ghana. This cannot happen in any civilized jurisdiction that the whole government will pay for water without seeing water bills when the suppliers of that water have water meters. This, I don't know how to describe it. But this is a tragedy of monumental proportions. Distinguished friends from the media, while time will not permit us to discuss all the startling details contained in the report of the Auditor General, the above disclosures are quite scandalizing to say the least. It is very clear that while COVID-19 may have been a national health disaster for Ghana, it was a bonanza and an avenue for officials of the Ekufuado Bagumia government and the new patriotic party to engage in the most obscene plundering of state resources never seen before in Ghana's history. You may recall that at the height of the pandemic in 2020, an audio recording of one Madame Felicia Tete, a former MCE and parliamentary candidate of the MPP in the Sagnerigu constituency in the northern region, emerged with grim details about how she, as a parliamentary candidate, was given a hopping 100,000 cities. That is equivalent to 1 billion old Ghana cities of COVID funds, while another 200,000 Ghana cities, 2 billion old cities, was given to her constituency chairman. I'm sure most of you have heard this, but some may not have heard. And some of the people who watching us may not have heard. So for the avoidance of that, we will play to you just one minute of that audio so that it can go on public record. And those of you who have not heard will know, will know um, how COVID-19 funds were distributed. We will play that after we take the questions. By simple extrapolation and arithmetic, and by parity of reasoning, about 82.5 million Ghana cities of COVID-19 funds were doled out to new patriotic party parliamentary candidates and constituency chairmen in all 275 constituencies across the country. How could the new patriotic party and the Yakufuado Bawomia government be so wicked and heartless? Clearly, these are a group of people who have no love for country. A group of people who have never been interested in protecting the citizenry, but only came into office to steal, to kill, and destroy. It is worthy of note that these thinking revelations have come at a time of excruciating hardships, occasioned by high tax payments, hyperinflation, and an increasing rate of unemployment. As we speak, ladies and gentlemen, government has announced a total freeze on public sector employment, while our secondary school children are battling with hunger due to shortage of food from the government. Our children don't even have access to basic curricular-based textbooks almost four years after the introduction of a new curricula. We are all witnesses, ladies and gentlemen, to how government has sought to justify its mismanagement of the Ghanaian economy by citing COVID-19 as the cause of our economic woes. Indeed, COVID-19 today is the most favorite line in the Kufuado Bawumia book of lamentations for the unprecedented havoc they have caused to the Ghanaian economy. At the very least opportunity, spokespersons of this government consciously and shamelessly recite this excuse as the cause of the economic mess we presently have on our hands. What these apologists of the Kufuado Bawumia government have failed to tell the Ghanaian people is the fact that COVID-19 brought the biggest financial windfall that have ever accrued to a sitting government 
in the history of Ghana. And that our dear country would not have been plunged into this economic mess if these resources were judiciously and prudently utilized by our duty bearers. Sadly, after squandering all these resources on some very unconscionable ventures, as we have demonstrated to you, these callous nation wreckers have turned around not only to blame COVID-19, which fattened their pockets, but are now seeking to expropriate the life savings and hard-earned monies of the Ghanaian people in the name of a so-called debt exchange program. We in the NDC have always maintained that the manner in which COVID-19 funds were expended by the Ekufuadu Bawumia government spelled doom for our economy. It is a fact beyond dispute that Ghana is now bankrupt and our economy has finally collapsed under the watch of President Ekufuadu and Alhaji Bawumia. In the face of this unpardonable and despicable raid on the public purse, there can be no justification whatsoever for the Kufuado Bawumia government to attempt to indirectly impose a draconian debt exchange program on the Ghanaian people in order to clean a mess they and their cronies in government created. It is therefore within the right of labor, pensioners, trade unions, individual bondholders, banks, and other stakeholders to stand firmly as they are doing now against the brazen attempt to foist and impose unfavorable terms of a so-called debt exchange program on them. Our demands. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we will not be surprised, despite the many damning revelations contained in the Auditor General's report,